Hello Roots, our next speaker is Alex Stamos, the Chief Security Officer at Facebook. Hey everybody, I'm Alex, I work at Facebook, um, and I get to work with a bunch of people whose job it is to think about the safety and security issues. No, it's okay, I'll just leave it here, it's fine, John. Um, safety and security issues for over two billion people. Um, how many people do you guys think in the world have internet access? So who wants, who think, how many people are there in the world? We'll do a little, should I do Socratic method? Yeah. 7.6 billion, I think that's about right. That's more significant digits than uh, I feel comfortable saying. So about a little less than four billion of those people have some amount of internet access, right? Have uh, what we define that as have regular access to 2G internet, which is slower internet than any kid in here uh, has ever used in their life. But that's, that's actually really significant. And so about two billion of those people uh, use one of our products. So we have Facebook, uh, which none of you kids have heard of. You've heard of Instagram, uh, which is us as well, and WhatsApp, uh, which has about 1.3 billion people. Um, WhatsApp actually has more messages on WhatsApp than all the text messages in the world put together, uh, which makes it pretty amazing. And it's also pretty amazing in that it's end-to-end -end encrypted, which means that all of the things that you send on WhatsApp are secret except from the two people or the multiple people part of the conversation. Um, and that was a really tough thing. And it's also a really interesting ethical issue, as you'll hear uh, later, probably from, from Leonard. So um, what I just wanted to do is talk a little bit about what we do in security and safety uh, and why it's really important. And then I'm going to have plenty of time for questions. And we got prizes for questions, because uh, I want to encourage curiosity um, and questioning of authority figures, uh, which is something I've done. So this is my 20th year at DEF CON. Um, I came when I was 18 years old. Uh, so you can do the math on that. Uh, I did not have a beard when I was 18. Um, but what I did, just like you, I was really excited to come to DEF CON and to meet a lot of people who were, just like me, really curious in how the world worked. Uh, and at the time, we didn't do stuff like this where there's all the awesome opportunity to hack stuff, to, to go do uh, competitive hacking, to go disassemble things. Uh, for us, we kind of had to find a lot of that. And a lot of my friends of that era uh, did those things uh, in a way that wasn't completely legal. Um, and DEF CON has really changed a lot and given us all these opportunities um, to explore and use our creative skills in a way that is not just legal and ethical, but you're making the world a little bit of a better place. Um, and so the things we do at our security team, so the first is we work to protect our company. So people want to break into us all the time. Why do you think they want to break into us? Why would you want to break into a company that has two billion people communicating with each other? Yeah. That's fantastic. What's your name? Yeah. Thank you very much, Maggie Yun. That's a totally correct answer. You can break into the company and get information um, about people, their private information, uh, which can be super valuable to lots of bad people, right? To criminals who want to steal money from people, um, from governments that don't like the fact that people that live in their country are able to communicate freely, uh, and uh, lots of people who want to cause individual harm. And so we have to protect the company, and that's a big challenge because we deal with some of the, the best hackers in the world who want to break in. We have another challenge, which is we have to build really secure products, right? So like I said, we have 2 billion people on Facebook, 700 million on Instagram, 1.3 billion on WhatsApp. We also make the Oculus headsets. Has anybody here played with an Oculus? before, that's a lot of fun, right? Technically, you're not supposed to do it to a 13. This is an interesting safety legal issue, um, but, so I'm gonna ignore those hands, but yes, it's a lot of fun, and um, we build those, we don't actually build them ourselves. we have a contract manufacturer, but we're responsible for designing those in the software and keeping them secure. Um, and we have a bunch of other products coming out, and so we have to make our products secure, and we do that both by having people on the inside who work to think about how can this thing break, um, but we also ask people on the outside to break things for us. Anybody know what that's called when we pay people to find bugs? Yeah. White hat program or a bug bounty program. That's right. And so we run, we've given out about four mil or five million dollars um, over the last four years uh, to people who have find, found bugs. Um, and for, you know, for some of these people, it's like a fun side project. For some of the people that do this, this is a full-time job and they support their entire family uh, doing this. We have a young man um, from India, uh, who, from a small village, who's made over $100,000 just from us 
finding bugs, um, and that's allowed him to support his entire family. And so you, you meet all these really interesting people. And then the third thing we do is we focus on the safety of our community, which when you have two billion people, 99.9% .9 of people are good, but the 0.1% of people who aren't good can do a lot of bad things online. Um, and so in that area, we try to make sure that people are being nice to each other, that they're behaving per our rules, that they're not abusing each other. Um, and then we also, one of the things we particularly focus on um, is the interaction between adults uh, and younger people because that can be a really uh, dangerous thing sometimes. And so we do a lot of works in the safety issue as well. And it's a lot of fun. Um, and one of the things we've been working on recently is around protecting elections. Anybody know what happened last November? <laughs> Oh, where are you from? Canada? Yes, where you have a functioning democracy. That, congratulations on that. I gotta meet your prime minister. He is a very nice guy. You, you have to not look him straight in the eyes because you'll fall into them, into those deep blue pools, but um, yeah. Yeah, but you're right. So there was alleged hacking of the US election. You said the name of the country, which I'm not allowed to do, uh, according to our lawyers, but um, there was a lot of things going on to try to influence our election in the United States, and that's actually happened in other places too. Uh, we've seen that in France, there's activity in Germany, um, and there's actu actually activity all around the world trying to mess with people's elections. So that's the kind of thing that is a new problem for us. Um, and one of the great parts about our job, uh, in my job, is I get to deal, that's a great look, yeah. Um, uh, one of the great parts of my, my job is I get to work on these security problems that nobody's ever seen before. Countries trying to manipulate millions or hundreds of millions of people to change elections is the kind of security problem that nobody's had to deal with before. Um, and so there's no book you can read and there's no class you can go to. We just have to kind of figure it out as we go along. And that's what we're doing. We had to spin up an entire team whose job it is to study that. And that team had some kind of traditional nerds, people like me who went to a computer science or electrical engineering degrees. But we also have a lot of interesting people who do different things. So the woman who runs that team, her name's Jen, she has an undergraduate degree in, like, in re foreign relations and she went a master's degree from a, a famous school that teaches about foreign relations and uh, international service. Um, and then she learned the computer stuff later. Um, we have people who have language skills and all the different languages we have to deal with. We have people with sociology degrees. And so one of the neat things about security is it's not just about hacking computers, in a super technical way, security is becoming the study of all of the different things that you can do um, with, with technology that can cause harm. And I think that's a super important thing and I think that's also really exciting for young people because there's all kinds of new things you're gonna have to deal with. And honestly, I can't predict in 15, 20 years when you guys are in the workforce um, what the kind of problems are gonna be that you're gonna deal with. So anyway, anybody have any questions about what we do or what's going on? Yes. What's my favorite part of what I do? That's a great question. So I like meeting new people. I get to do that a lot. Um, I get to travel around the world. Yeah, there's some swag. That's, you, you hacked our swag formula. Good work, buddy. Social engineering uh, for sunglasses. Um, I like traveling around the world and meeting new people uh, and representing the company and talking about the things we do security. So I got to, I, I, in the last couple of months, I've been in, um, I got to go to Korea and Japan. Uh, and meet people there about what they're doing in security and meet their heads of cybersecurity. I got to go to Germany and France. Uh, so I got to go to the LSA Palace, which is their White House in France, and talk to them about that, about security, and then go to the Bundestag, which is the, uh, the place where the German parliament is, and talk to them about what we're doing to secure their election. And that's really neat. It's neat to be able to, you know, we're, we're entering this weird world where companies are doing things that are traditionally the realm of countries, right? Like providing security for two billion people is the kind of thing that used to be a nation state problem that an army would take care of or a police force. And we're in this new world where the um, keeping people safe technically is the responsibility of private companies and people who work at private companies much more so than the actual countries where they live. And so that's like been a really interesting thing to be able to work with these people who are representing, you know, these people are elected to represent millions or hundreds of millions of people, and we have a responsibility to listen to them and to work with them to keep their people safe. So I like doing that. I like hiring people. I like having a team um, and seeing young people come in. Like, we just had a class of interns come through, and I got to go get dinner with the interns. Um, and it's just really exciting to go uh, work with people who are new to the field. 
Any other questions? Anybody want to ask anything? Yeah. How much data does Facebook store? That's an excellent question. So we don't release the exact number, but what, what do you think the, uh, so what's a big number of da data that you, that you think? How, how's it measured? In, in what bytes? Petabytes? That's great. So what's 1,000 petabytes? Starts with an E. Uh, how's your Greek? What's, what's, what's six in Greek? Exabytes. So we measure our storage capacity in exabytes. So for the security team, our storage capacity is in petabytes. Um, but for the overall of holding everybody's vacation videos for the last 10 years, uh, turns out to be measured in exabytes of data. Uh, in about eight data centers globally. So think of hundreds and hundreds of thousands of spinning disks. Each one is, is holding something between two to 10 terabytes. Uh, and that's what our storage looks like. We also have petabytes and petabytes of RAM. So a lot of, like if you, if you open up Facebook and you just scroll through it, everything you're seeing that is there is actually not on a hard drive, it's in RAM. Because there's no way we could pull it off of a hard drive fast enough for people to have a good experience. So basically everything everybody's done for the last couple of days in Facebook, all the photos, all that stuff, is stored in hundreds of petabytes of RAM around the world, and then we have this big complicated system that when you say, I wanna look at a picture on Instagram, I wanna look at a picture on Facebook, it figures out where's the closest machine, goes, pulls it out of RAM, and then gets it to you. And so we have about eight data centers globally, and then we have hundreds of points of presence servers that are close that will route then over a private fiber optic network to get to where our, we're holding your data. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Data engineering is amazing. Yeah. Yeah, that's a fantastic question. So the question was, what are the legal issues with holding so much data? Um, and they are extremely complicated. So what percentage of our users do you think are outside the United States? Yes, miss? 75? That's, that's a good guess, but it's higher than that. The percentage is higher. What's a number higher than 75 and lower than 100%? 87.5. That's extremely close. It's 88%. That guy gets two sunglasses. That was a really good... Yeah, so... We are a global company, and so one of the challenges all of tech companies are facing right now is that the, the laws for how we operate are very, very different everywhere. And countries have still not figured out how they want to regulate what data we collect, how we hold it, what we do with it, what our responsibility is. Um, and so it's a really complicated time to try to deal with that. What we, we do is we try to follow the laws in the places where we have um, major operations, and so for us, that's the United States, and then Ireland is where we have our biggest, uh, is our headquarters for outside the United States. Um, and do countries give us mean glances? Yes. In Europe, um, they're giving us a very mean glance called the General Data Protection Regulation, um, which is a whole new set of rules about what we're supposed to do with people's data in Europe uh, that nobody knows what they actually mean because they're incredibly broad. Um, and so there's this constant uh, kind of discussion between us and governments of like, what is the appropriate rules? They pass these rules, we ask them what they actually mean. Sometimes these are friendly discussions, sometimes they're less friendly, and they end up in court. But this is kind of a constant thing that we're trying to figure out because there's not one set of rules we can live by that will make everybody happy. So we try to do the best we can um, to live by the privacy rules of the most restrictive countries, and then hopefully that works everywhere. Okay. I gotta get going. Uh, thank you so much for your time. I'm gonna be around if anybody wants to chat about anything. And we have our Capture the Flag competition starting at one o'clock today. Um, we got lots of great prizes, drones, echoes, uh, all kinds of stuff. So please uh, give it a shot uh, and compete in the Capture the Flag. Thank you.